When it comes to cognitive health, nootropics are the buzzword right now. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what they are and if they're effective. Hi, I'm Kristen Lascola, host of View on Health. I'm here with Richard Hall, head of research and development for Ameriden. And today we're talking about this buzzword, nootropic, which has a lot to do with brain health, cognition, and our neurological health. So Richard, you're gonna to have to unpack this one for us. What is a nootropic, and in your opinion, does it work? Sure, well, let's unpack the word nootropic first. Nootropic means, neuro means mind, and tropic means bending. But actually, this class of uh, cognition supplements uh, is really a good class. You're going to find many different things doing many different functions of the brain. Some will give you clarity, some will give you focus, some will actually clear up some impairments that you might have had if you have been slowed down in the past. For instance, phosphatidylserine, herpazine, St. John's wort, rhodiola rosea, ashwagandha, all these things will help your brain to different pathways. And uh, the one we've classified as what we'd call a king of nootropics is Rhodiola rosea, which comes from the high mountains of Russia, about five to 9,000 feet. It was searched out thousands of years ago by kings of China uh, as a very valuable substance because it, one, makes you feel good, it reduces your stress by a ton, it puts cortisol in check, which is today PTSD, uh, is got to be the, one of the number one supplements that I would recommend. The second one I would recommend to anybody would be ashwagandha. You have others again like herpazine, uh, St. John's wort, periwinkle, things of this nature. But you need to be careful because some of these are actually dosed out in supplements in micrograms. Realize there's a thousand micrograms to one milligram. And it's easier for machines that make supplements to actually dose these things out in milligrams. Uh, funny story, I tested herpazine when it first came out by putting a little water on my finger and putting it into my tongue. And 15 minutes later, I was sweating and spinning and I had to lay down because that was dosed in micrograms. I just took in 17 to 20 milligrams. <laughs> uh, I thought I was gonna die and I had to call my friend, Dr. Zakir, Romanzanoff in New York to figure that one out. So you be careful with what you buy. But these new supplements coming out called neurotropics uh, can be good. I would just investigate the companies that are putting them out and look at the reviews that they, they're having online or call the company and find out more about them. So you mentioned a bunch of different names. Are each one of those supplements meant to address a different cognitive function? Or is there, or is there, are they all acting on the same? No, they're, they're taking different pathways. Some will uh, clear up what they call fogginess in the brain. Others will give you sharpness when you're doing a test. It'll give, some will give you recall value. Some will take your stress away and some will calm you. So can you give us an example of some of those? Like which ones give us clarity? Which ones give us focus? Sure. Which ones reduce stress? Yeah, rhodiola uh, rosea is king. We carry the only water extracted one in the nation, which is a pure form. That's going to reduce your stress down to where you just get through the day much better. Ashwagandha is a great one for reducing anxiety, I would say, more than rhodiola rosea. So I would think that these are very needed in this day with PTSD and the things that are going on with this virus um, to get your stress level down, keep cortisol in check. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think we all can agree with that oh. and use that. So thanks for clearing that up. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.